Welcome to Worthington Home. I'm Chris. Are you ready to do some thrifting? Let's go. Okay, let's see what we can find in this Goodwill. We're in Wallingford. There's lots and lots of bags on the walls. And so many pairs of shoes. Oh my gosh, all color coordinated. They have some good books today. I haven't read this one. Oh, Little House on the Prairie. Oh, it's not in great condition. I actually have a better copy than this, but this takes me back. This bag is beautiful. Coach bag, old coach bag. These are some pretty mugs made in China. Cute little bowl. So many things are reproductions meant to look old. I don't know what that is. My grandmother had those. This squirrel is really cute. Hobby Lobby. I like this woven tray. That could be good for storage purposes. What is under here? Aha, little birdie. That's really interesting. This is a sweet copper tone mold and would look really nice hanging on the wall if it has the hanger. Yep, it has the hanger right there. These plates are so 70s, 60s, 70s. The color combinations alone scream 70s to me. Ooh, these are so nice. I don't know if that's amber glass. Very pretty. This pie plate is fully stalking me now. Always digging, always digging. Interesting. I have that glass and silver plate, something very similar. It's a cake plate. And this is nice with the divided pieces to the tray and glass, it's heavy. And this is heavy too, and I'm not sure if that hole is for a candle maybe? This is a pretty set. Pier one, I missed that store. This is really fascinating, it's heavy and glass. Ooh, I like this little champagne flute. I love the color of it. And these are pretty with the blue details. And I like these with the little stripes. And this one's really nice. I would like a margarita in this one, please. This is sharp. What is with the sharp edges? It's like a porcupine plate. This is so pretty, a little bud vase and it's um, etched, but also chipped, unfortunately. Pretty depression glass. I love the color and the details on this piece. This would be great for some bathroom storage, some cotton balls or Q-tips. This is interesting. I don't know about that gold detailing. It's a little bit much. Cute little glass container on feet and another little divided plate. And the silver and glass is pretty. I'm really trying not to buy too much more glass. I have so much of it at this point and I think it's gonna be unpleasant to ship. Oh my gosh, the stack of plates is heavy and very well wrapped. Sometimes they wrap it so well you can't see the tags. I like these glasses. I love the details on them. They need a good washing. Pretty uh, salad bowls. Ooh, I like this. A candle would look pretty in there. And that's a nice piece. I love the pink details all around the rim. And this is pretty, so much for the girl who's not supposed to be looking so much at glass. What is back here? Ooh, that's like, I don't know, somebody's project that went south. Now well, here's a nice silver platter. You see these all over the place. They're not very unusual, but they can be very pretty in your house. 
These candlesticks are interesting. Not marked. A little pricey. We had some other ones as well, but nothing was screaming my name. Check out these braided rugs. I mean, they're dirty. They need a good wash, but aren't they interesting? Really unique. I don't know about the colors, but yeah, I was kind of intrigued by these. This poor dresser has seen better days, but you know what? What a good makeover project this would be. Very low priced and look inside, look at the divided drawers. And this piece is genuine mahogany. Oh, I love this needle point. Oh my gosh. Look at all of the work and detail that went into this. I don't know what I would use it for, but I can't leave it behind. There's just no way. Okay, now we're at Habitat for Humanity Restore to see what they might have today. So let's find out. I think this might be Delft, if I'm not mistaken. And it is. This is an interesting kind of arts and crafts looking piece, obviously a newer reproduction of that style. And this curio cabinet is really nice and surprisingly big. Blue velvet wing back chair was in good condition. And this would be a great makeover piece, but it's too expensive for a project. $48 for 20, I would do it all day long. It has good potential. Here's an interesting hand-painted Lazy Susan. That color is really interesting. It reminds me a little bit of a peacock. Hand-painted, $10. I went back and forth on this one quite a bit. It is really nice. And you can see that it is signed on the back and looks like it was made in 1974. This Kate's, Kate Spade bag is stained, unfortunately. And this woven basket was interesting, but was also not in good repair. You see that little rip. We have lots of other little bags here today that are interesting, but none of them are really super high quality. And here's like the blanket and throw pillow section. I always check this section. Oh, those are so pretty. I love the gold rim. And this teapot must have been beautiful back when it had a lid. I don't know if that's Westminster Abbey. These plates are really pretty. And I like the sailboat print, but I prefer the one I bought in Terryville the other day. I think they're more expensive looking. I have picked up a lot of interesting things over the last week, and I'm so excited to share them with you. The first thing I wanna show you is this excellent tray. It's a road runner and it's made by a company called Karak. And it says that it's hand inlaid by master craftsmen and uh, fused into Karak's famous satin block material, which is impervious to alcohol, boiling water, and cigarette burns. Yikes. Uh, you see, here's the label. And it's just a great, interesting piece. I really like it and I think it will make a nice addition to anybody's home. It's a mid-century piece and it's not in perfect shape. I don't know if you can see there's like a little, it's a little bit of a scratch, but I think this little Roadrunner is awesome. I found this little etched mouse I don't know if that's an etching or a pencil sketch. I'm not quite sure. I apologize for the glare. It seems like I'm always fighting with glare in my house. But it's a sweet little mouse. It's signed Greg, something like Come Comb or something. I don't know. And it's also signed 1983. But it's so sweet and it was professionally framed at one point. And I just think because it's black and white, it would look nice in any home. I found these really pretty happy anniversary glasses, little like champagne glasses with a twisted stem and it's from the Robert Emmett Company. And the box is super dusty, but these are the pretty, pretty glasses. They're called Clada glasses, I guess, because of this pretty little Irish symbol. Can you see that? I'm going to put this down by my um, white tablecloth so you can see it better. 
but they are really pretty. They look like they were never used. They're in perfect condition. And oh, I think they could be so sweet for the right person. The glasses were $5.99. I forgot to tell you the mouse was $5.99 and the tray was $4.99. I bought two Pyrex bowls that desperately need to be washed for my own use. I use these kinds of bowls all the time and I'm the worst because I always crack the stupid lids because you really can't put them in the dishwasher as I continue to do learning nothing from my mistakes. You really have to hand wash the tops. Um, I'm lazy. I don't know. What can I tell you? But I, I do love glass containers. I have tons of them. I think most of mine are anchor, um, but I use, just use these nonstop in my house. I came across this lovely needle point. Can you see it? This was at Goodwill and it was so pretty. And I know the time something like this takes, my goodness. It just, yeah, I don't know. It just touches me that somebody put in all of that effort. This was $4.99. And I don't have a particular use for it. Um, I could make it into, I guess, a ginormous pillow, um, or I could save it for some future reupholstery project. But for $4.99, a, hand a handmade piece like this, yeah, it couldn't stay in Goodwill. I had to have it. I found this beautiful Denby bowl made in England. at Habitat for the Habitat for Humanity Restore. And I really loved it. I think this would look amazing with succulents planted in it, something very low that doesn't require a lot of soil. I think that would be so amazing, but it could also just be used in the kitchen um, for just everyday use. But I thought it was beautiful. Something about it, well, this is gonna sound like a stretch, something about it reminds me a little bit of Catherine Holm. Um, and I'm not sure what it is. So I'm gonna try to see if I can find a picture that would explain my thinking a little bit better because this certainly is not the same price point as Catherine Holm. But I love this. It has a very mid-century modern look and it's such a nice neutral piece. It could go anywhere, but at the same time, it packs a punch. And I like the black rim because it gives such nice contrast to the earthier colors that it has otherwise. And I paid $6 for this piece. I picked up this glass, I don't know if it's like a glass stand. I think it's a stand, I don't know. I suppose you could put like a candle on it, um, but I have a very particular plan actually for this piece that I'll share with you in a little bit. But I loved how it had this gold rim. I thought that was really pretty. And it was $2.99 and I know exactly where it's gonna go. I'll show you very soon. I bought this Delft tile. Um, I really liked it. I have quite a bit of Delft and I love the windmill theme. And I thought this was really pretty. It's hand painted and it was only $6, but unfortunately it has this little crack, this little chip in the bottom. And I have to say, I've got to get better about that. I really, you know, sometimes I'm so busy looking at kind of the, the main qualities of a piece, like in this case, like, oh, it's Delft, it's blue and white, it has the windmill, like all the things that I love about it. Um, I don't sometimes take the time I need to really check out the details and the details are really important. It's great to see the forest, but not if you're gonna walk right smack into a tree, right? I've gotta stop walking into trees. I bought two books at Habitat for Humanity just to read. They're really not for my collection at all. Um, I just, you know, it's cheaper sometimes to pick up used books than to download them on, kind on the Kindle app. So I got Whiskey When We're Dry by John Larson, which sounds interesting. And I picked up another Michael Crichton book, uh, Timeline. He's so easy. He's so readable. He's so interesting. So those will be fun to read. Again, nothing special, nothing precious, but just for my own enjoyment and amusement. Okay, I think this is my favorite thing that I picked up. This is an old coach bag. It's suede with leather details. It is super clean inside. 
and it's made in that old coach way, meaning when, when they were making really high quality products with heavy, heavy leather, not some of the, um, the cheaper pieces they made later on. This has feet. I love metal feet on a bag. However, it's not in perfect condition. It's got some discoloration and a little bit of dirt. Um, on the edges in particular, right where you would expect it to be. Or I don't know if this is from rubbing against a darker fabric, but I can live with that um, because the overall piece is great. Let me put it on so you can get a sense of it. So those were all of my thrifted finds for the week. Um, I'm getting a little bit pickier, I find, which is good. I think it's a sign that I'm training my eye because it's really different to buy things just for yourself and your own use. And um, you need to apply different criteria if you're looking to do some reselling of things. So that's all new to me and I love it. And I am determined to get really good at it, but um, it won't happen overnight. I know that. So it's all good. The next group of things I'm gonna show you, we actually purchased from my um, husband's friend, Greg. Uh, Greg is so nice, he's lovely. He's one of three brothers and he's just going through the very difficult process of having his parents transition to assisted living because they have a great many health problems and they, they really need more intensive care. And I know that's hard and my heart goes out to them because we none of us like to make those kinds of choices. However, they do happen. His parents will be in a safer place that meets their medical needs. And in the meantime, he and his brothers were in the situation of having to kind of liquidate most of their assets because they're not gonna need them where they're going. They're going from a, like a three-story condo to um, just a couple of rooms. So anyway, he asked my husband if he wanted to go over with him and take a look and give him some advice. And um, this is after kind of the brothers had already gone through everything and decided who wanted what. So my husband walked through and it's really funny because uh, I wasn't with him. And so he FaceTimed me to see if there was anything that I would want. He's such a good boy that way. And it was really funny to try to communicate that way because he was showing me like, He'd show me like a bookcase and I'd say, no, what's that piece? No, that one, no, right, no, the other right. Go up, go down, pan in, zoom out. Like it was just, it was very funny. But I picked out some things. He picked out some things. Um, we got everything for, for a good price, a friend's price. So these are the things that I picked up. Um, I paid, I think it was 125 for all of this. Again, friend price. Um, got this sweet little book. Peter Rabbit and the Little Boy, Little Beatrix Potter. And this one, oh my gosh, it's so, so cute. Beautiful little illustrations. This was, oh my gosh, it's so good. Oh, I can't, I don't know. It's Roman, Roman numerals. So I'll have to look that up. But it's the sweetest little book. And similarly, I got this little book, Peter Rabbit in the tiny bits. Oh, so, so, so sweet. These great illustrations. Oh my gosh. Then I got this Sunbonnet Babies in Mother Goose Land. And you gotta love Mother Goose. This one's not in perfect condition and it's written in with the date 1931 and the copyright is 1927 although this edition says 1928. So I don't know, pick a date, any date. And then we've got the Pooh Storybook with no dust cover or anything. It's very sweet. I mean, you know, who doesn't love, oh, who doesn't love Winnie the Pooh? This next piece that we picked up was so weird. And when my husband was showing it to me, when we were FaceTiming, oh, we were like trying to figure out what it was. These like brass Dutch looking shoes. And at first I thought it was like maybe a coal scoop, but my husband pointed out that it has like a hanger. Actually it's two. And we're like, what on earth could this be? So, we think that they actually go together 
like this and have little plants in them and hang on the wall like fake plants we think that's it but if you have a different idea please let me know um, because we both neither of us had ever seen anything like this before we thought they were interesting and you know it's not too often that we're both like what the heck is that so when that happens it's hard not to pull the trigger and buy it this was with it this reproduction bed warmer it has this i think is it the mayflower yep this is supposed to be the mayflower 1620 but it wasn't made in 1620 and it has this um interesting handle it has a crack in it right here but you could still definitely hang it and it does kind of open oh it's got oh like a latch yeah so it doesn't really open but anyway this is really meant to be a wall hanging oh! well i just said it doesn't open and uh i lied here <laughs> <laughs> As I decapitate myself, I see now this it's this piece. Oh my goodness. Yeah, don't don't decapitate yourself with a reproduction bed warmer. So anyway, I'm not sure when this was made. I would think this was probably 60s or 70s, but it was kind of interesting. And so we thought, let's grab it. I picked up this is gonna be very heavy. Oh boy. I didn't have to do one at a time. <laughs> You can see this very interesting heavy basin. It's marked. Not sure what the mark is. I'm gonna to have to look that up. It has some discolorations, as you can see. And maybe actually they're even. Maybe they're purposeful. Would that be on purpose? I don't know. That's the basin. And this is the pitcher. Quite large. And it came with this chamber pot. And it's interesting because the lid, let me see if I can show you this. The lid matches the pitcher and basin set. So clearly they went together, but the pot and the chamber pot doesn't. It's a different pattern altogether. Do you see that? They definitely don't go as part of the same set. A lot of times these big basin and pitcher sets would be part of like a broader toiletry set and they might have other things with them like a um, soap dish and, and other things. Um, but there were just the two pieces here. And I will tell you, these make really nice planters. If you have a plant that doesn't need super deep roots, um, these look so nice that way. This is such a pretty art deco style pitcher like maybe it's a creamer I'm not sure it's really beaten up um it's not in good shape here's here's the so you can see it's got the chip but it's so sweet oh and it's got more yeah more chips here this was another piece that was in the same um glassed hutch china cabinet I guess it was a china cabinet um that was really too damaged to be of much interest to me, but I couldn't bear the idea of having it thrown out and it certainly doesn't, it's not real sellable in its current state. You can see it's got a chip here and it's got all kinds of pretty significant discolorations going around. Some people like pieces that are discolored, but this one's pretty bad and it has other little like nicks in it. The seam is very rough as well and kind of raised up. This says, Athens W and S and I haven't researched it yet but look at the pretty pattern I was super happy to have this little bleak vase that's in perfect condition it's so sweet I love bleak it's so delicate oh my gosh and when you look inside it's got this beautiful it's like looking at a shell they're so special and this signature the um, markings are down here and similarly there is a little shamrock teacup that's very cute this one is not bleak it says I think Shelley England shamrock fine bone china so pretty and there is a little saucer 
that goes with it from the same maker. And then there's this little dessert plate that also goes uh, as part of the same set. Yep, same maker. So I picked up these three. This pretty teacup is made by the same company, but did not have a saucer that went with it. It's just called Lily of the Valley. It's the same thing, fine bone china, Shelly, England. And even the little handle is green, so sweet. I wish I had the saucer. And then speaking of Lily of the Valley, this is bone china, Hammersby and Co made in England other little lily of the valley flowers. I think they're lily of the valley. It's so tiny and cute. This piece is so weird, but you know, if it's weird, it's especially interesting to me. This is called a kitty merit board. Kitty meaning kid, not cat. And it gives you little points for doing your daily work. So I was quiet in the morning. Was I? Yes. I brushed my teeth. Yep, I did that. I hung up my clothing. I kept my hands clean. I came to meals on time. I ate my vegetables. I did not tease. I put away my toys. I minded my mother. I went to bed on time. And then this shows how many days were perfect days. And did you get a gold star for the week? How adorable is that? It's dated 1939 S and A. Okay, I just watered this poor plant. This is one of my few remaining real plants in the house because the cats don't bother this one so much. But you can see I have it on a china plate, which is kind of silly. I think that looks so much nicer. It fits in there perfectly. Note to self, do a better job of watering this poor thing. For now, I pop this little pitcher down on my bookshelf in the dining room and I've turned the cracks away so you don't see them. You just notice the very pretty print on it, the mountain scene. And then, here's the rest of it. I put this little Art Deco cup, I think it's Art Deco, right here. And then I put the little tile with the windmill right up on the top shelf. And you can't even see the chip. Unfortunately, I don't have little succulents that I can put in this pot to show you what I mean when I tell you that would look nice. I have this little fake plant. I can at least kind of stick it in there to give you the idea of it. I have some decor plant plans for these pretty little shamrock pieces, um, but I'm gonna save that for another vlog so stay tuned for those. So I don't plan to keep this here, but you can see that the bed warmer looks really pretty hanging on the wall in the dining room. I need to clean it. You know, I'll get my friend Brasso out and we'll see what we can do here. Um, and if it were gonna live there, I would make it lower than it is. There was just already a nail there from a Christmas decoration. Okay, so here's the pitcher and basin set. I put it on this plant stand for right now. And it's in the guest bedroom. And I think it looks really pretty. I don't know if it's too dangerous to leave it here, but if there's nothing in it, I don't think the cats will go after it. I'm not really sure. But it looks pretty with this little pink chair. And then I put the... Um, little basin set here. Oops, the chamber pot. I mean, I put here. And though again, they're not a matched set. That's kind of bothering me. But anyway, I just put it there for now. Okay, I'm supposed to be selling stuff, not keeping stuff. But how cute does that little mouse look there? Okay, here I'm thinking a swap might be in order because I love this little tray. I think it's so, so sweet, but I'm not sure it's pulling the right colors, especially this pop of red. I think that goes better. What do you think? 
if you watched my recent video where I was thrifting and antiquing in Terryville and I bought a big glass compote and I had said that I was going to make tiramisu in it. And I just wanted to share with you that I did make tiramisu in it. Um, I made it for Valentine's Day and I had made a mistake. I don't know. I thought that for some reason you used um, Madeline or Madeline cookies um, with that recipe, but no, it turns out it was lady fingers and I did cheat. I bought the lady fingers pre-made, but everything else I did myself. And I just want to show you how that turned out. And for extra fun, I put them on my Limoges rose plates that I had also recently thrifted. So we got like the full effect. So check it out. Yep. Oh my gosh. As I've been sitting here editing this video, um, I'm sort of horrified to realize how many times I used the word sweet. Like if it had been a drinking game that you had to drink every time I said the word sweet, you would be on the floor by now, like at least. Maybe you'd be in the hospital by now. So don't play that game, bad game, bad game. But anyway, yeah, sorry. Um, I guess I need to find some more words to use. Apologies. So that's what I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this vlog. There's a little bit of everything as there often is. And as a reminder, I post every Wednesday and Friday at noon Eastern Standard Time. So I really hope I'll catch you for the next one. If you would just take a minute to subscribe and hit like if you like the video, that would be fantastic. And I hope you have a great day. Mm -hmm.